Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Um, and in this video, I'm talking about Southern British English, which is a posh accent. Uh, why is it called Southern British sometimes? Well, it comes from the United Kingdom, obviously, and the very southern section thereof, particularly um, the southeast. So that's the London area. In southwest, their West Country accent, um, it's a bit more like the pirate accent. It's an accent which um, informed that the Anglophone Caribbean countries of the southern part of the United States, whereas from the people from Eastern England, those who went to the uh, northern part of uh, America's eastern seaboard, as in the New England states, and that influenced their accents. So, um, more about Southern British English. It's also called Received Pronunciation, many other names. Um, however, this accent can be found um, throughout the British Isles. It's not uncommon in Southeast England, but the further one goes from there, the more unusual it is. Like um, the very southwest of Ireland, which is where I'm from, uh, almost nobody sounds like this. Um, I acquired this accent outside of Ireland, as you may have deduced. Uh, what is this accent known for? Uh, well, clarity of diction, and it's universally comprehended. Americans have said this to me, that they sometimes find British people difficult to understand. I had a Geordie colleague, as he is from Newcastle, UK, and some of my American colleagues said uh, his speech was almost incomprehensible to them. Uh, my accent is known for long vowels, although we do omit certain vowels. Um, we do, you know, if they're in the middle of the word, we sometimes skip them out in literature, or I could think of other examples. Um, it's non-rhotic, which is to say that uh, we don't pronounce the R unless it's a word initial or indeed it's a double R in the middle of a word, possibly the end of a word. Okay, let me give you an example of a non-rhotic pronunciation. For example, saying horse as opposed to horse or making the R more evident. So the R is skipped out a lot of the time. Uh, a wonderful example is in the word fire. I'm not doing it that RP. Um, but if you may have watched the film Zulu, came out in 1963, starring Michael Caine, and he's playing an army officer, and he's giving an order to his men, and it sounds like, fire, 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 and there's no R. It's almost as though it's spelled F-A, apostrophe U, fire, uh. Um, Michael Caine is a working class Londoner, so his accent is called Cockney. Uh, however, he was playing an officer in a film set in 1879, therefore he had to speak in this posh accent, which is why it sounded like that. Uh, well, what are some of the um, expressions and some of the uh, notable words of this accent? Uh, people say, come to mine, at mine, blah, blah, blah. This means my house. I presume that it's uh, principally Americans to whom I'm speaking and um, Americans are often amused by this expression, people don't use it. Incidentally, in Ireland and Great Britain, we tend to say, by house. We don't say home very much. Home could refer to the actual house, or it could refer to the hometown or something like that. Whereas I know in the United States, people almost invariably say home. Uh, we tend to say flat, not apartment. Um, I say tend to. The word apartment is used um, in this accent, but it's uh, less common. It's coming in more and more, I suppose. Uh, so I know it's confusing because flat could mean non-bumpy, but in this case it uh, is a word which is the equivalent of apartment. Uh, film, people say that, not movie so much. However, I do say movie occasionally. Um, the distinctions between American and British vocabulary are not total. Of course, in the British Isles, people do occasionally use American words we understand all these Americanisms because we watch American television or films as well. Um, whereas um, people in the United States don't always understand this British Lexus. The distinction should not be overemphasized because of course the vocabulary is 99% the same. Likewise the spelling. People don't uh, tend to count the words which are the very same. People only think it's worthwhile noting the ones which are distinct. Um, film studies. I was surprised at an American school curriculum to see a pupil was doing film studies. I thought, well, wouldn't you call it movie studies because it's an American school? But there we are. I know film is the physical object, the item on which photos or indeed 
films, movies were, were shot. But these days it's all digitalized, so it doesn't exist anymore. So for the junior generation, they may be confused as why on earth does people, uh, does anyone say um, film rather than movie? Well, it relates to a physical object which is no longer used. Um, we say cinema. If you're a very advanced IRP, you might accentuate it like this, cinema, um, as opposed to movie theatre. For us, a theatre is always where plays are performed, perhaps ballets or operas, but then it's getting on more to an opera house. An actress, um, rather than a female actor. Now, some people have got very politically correct and say actor, use it as gender neutral. This is one of the things that uh, always um, disappoints me about the Oscars. They say, said best saying best male actor. That's a tautology. An actor is male. It's like saying a male man. But in these um, gender-confused, non-binary times, one has to make things crystal clear. Uh, that's another point, using one to mean people in general. And likewise, I say, best female actor in Hollywood. They're saying, well, actors are not female. What? Say, actress. We have a perfectly serviceable word, um, which is gendered. What's wrong with that? I know one can go over the top using these um, feminine uh, nouns. Well, obviously there's murderous as opposed to murderer, administratrix as opposed to administrator. I like these old fashioned ones. Maybe I could dig a few more out. Authoress, poetess, um, there must be more and more. Um, wardress, as in a warder in a prison and the female equivalent is a wardress. But uh, some of these have fallen into, into disuse. Um, people, well, saying pupil rather than student for those at school, if they're um, 18 or other in secondary education or primary education, using that one. However, people do sometimes say student, particularly towards the end of secondary education. And one of my pupils was adamant that she must be alluded to as a student, not a pupil. She felt it was degrading. Um, people saying schoolmaster is old hat to mean teacher or school mistress, school mom for a woman. Uh, so again, I think this one has fallen into abeyance. Um, some people were very strict about saying university rather than uni, so I tend to avoid that slang word. Uh, undergraduate, if uh, the student really is doing his or her first degree, um, as opposed to student, because that's more general. Um, but, you know, a lot of people do say student, actually. And a lot of organisations have got student in the name. Relating to Oxford, confusingly, there were certain colleges where some of the, um, the don, some of the lecturers, had the title student. Um, so to avoid confusion, the undergraduates had to be undergraduates. Um, ah, well, relating to university, but this um, pertains particularly to Oxford and Cambridge. Going up to university, so when you enrol, matriculate, going down, when you graduate and finish, being sent down, being expelled, but that could refer to school, or even in uh, a court of law, if someone's found guilty when they're sent to, to prison, you would say he was sent down, sent down for three years, things like that. And the judge's uh, words, when he was sent after he's passed sentence, would be to the um, uh, officers in the court, take him down, like that, as in physically remove him. Uh, we often say, I see, to show that we're listening. Whereas um, my American friends often say, right. Um, but it seemed to me they were, they were simply saying that to show that they understood, not that they're necessarily concurring with what I was saying. So I was confused by that one. Ah, some slang, tucker, to mean food or tuck. Uh, again, this one uh, is old fashioned, not used very much. Um, nosh is a slang word, again, meaning food. One would use it in a casual context. It's more like a snack, probably not a proper meal. Uh, we tend to speak in canonical grammar. Or shall is a rather old-fashioned word we sometimes use, and that's grammatical. Uh, perhaps it's more emphatic, a bit like um, General MacArthur's, I shall return, uh, in relation to the Philippines. Um, however, people sometimes uh, use them at, as a neuter pronoun, rather than he or she. I did it myself yesterday uh, in a video, whereas I shouldn't have done. Uh, I'm trying to think of more examples. Uh, something came to mind, but it's um, eluded me. We do not skip articles, whereas in certain British accents, particularly in Northern England, people sometimes omit articles. Take the dog for a walk in the park. It might come out as take dog for walk in park, uh, things like that. So these are a few of the features of this uh, variety of English. 
Um, so I've been speaking a mild version of it. Well, let me do a posh version of it. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll read in my ordinary accent and then I will posh it up. US tax law allows television preachers to get away with almost anything. We know this from personal experience. Our Lady of Perpetual Exemption will not be able to accept donations from church supporters from the states of Mississippi, Nevada, Pennsylvania, or South Carolina. We apologize for any inconvenience. All right, so I'll do it again, super posh. US tax law allows television preachers to get away with almost anything. We know this from personal experience. Our Lady of Perpetual Exemption will not be able to accept donations from church supporters from the states of Mississippi, Nevada, Pennsylvania, South Carolina. We apologize for any inconvenience. So there we are. What, what was the difference? I suppose the vowels were rounder. Uh, I really went to town on sounds like ch. Uh, I can't think what else. So please, what are your questions? Post comments below and uh, disseminate this to all your kith and kin.